Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Today, once again, we are playing a Legacy Constructed League with the Epic Storm deck version 4.1. Uh, we're currently in queue, so we should be paired shortly. Uh, same thing as the last video, no changes. 4.1 has been great. I will consider playing this in Seattle, unless something changes to the metagame in the next few weeks. But I expect to be playing Echoing Truth and Echoing Truth has really been great. I'm not sure about the fourth empty of the Warrens. Like, that is the flex spot. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So I don't think I'll be changing it anytime soon. Uh, but that would be the slot to go if there was a card being added. It wouldn't be, like, Chain of Vapor or anything else. I know AJ Kerrigan isn't a fan of the Past and Flames, and he's running a fourth or a cyborg discard spell there, the fourth copy of Cabal Therapy. But I've had Pest and Flames come up enough for me since he's mentioned that, where, I'm, where in my mind I think it's ridiculous to cut, but there's no harm in experimenting with other things. So I know some other members of the website team are also cutting Pest and Flames just to try it. So there's no harm in trying different things out. I do it all the time, but I'm a little more conservative with the main pieces in my opinion. And we have a round one opponent. We won the die roll. I faced this opponent a number of times in the past. He's usually on four color pile. So the sand is kind of weak. The swamp is kind of a nuisance here because it only casts Cabal Therapy and Dark Ritual, and you really want to cast these brainstorms. So I think we actually have to mulligan this. This hand is fine. We'll top it, but I think I'm going to fetch anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And we're going to search up Volcanic Island. There's more black cards in the deck to imprint on Chrome Mox, so I'd rather have the red source for Burning Wish available. And that's not quite what we need, so we're going to shuffle. Wooded Foothills. That's interesting. I think he's on Rugged Alber. Pretty good. I don't think we can actually win. So hopefully we pass and our opponent wastelands us and then plays the Delver Secrets. I think that would allow us to be able to win this game. They're playing ultra conservative, so that will not be the case.
So I think we're going to chance it and search up a Badlands here. And they chose not to shuffle off their ponder. So we have nine mana, which means we can Cabal Therapy for Force Will, and then play Burning Wish, pay for Spell Pierce, and then empty the Warrens. But if he has Days in hand, we probably lose. He has both. And a spell snare. Okay then. So we're going to board in the empty plan. See how that goes. Our opponent's taking a while to sideboard. Just killing the clock.
This hand is fine. We'll try this. We really need mana, but you have disruption, you have cantrips, you have access to basic lands. You generally lead off with Ponder. Hmm. Really want Rituals and not Lions and Diamonds, but this will have to do. Hey, we're not getting stifled. So I imagine there's going to be a spell pierce on this. We're going to cast Brainstorm now to avoid REB. We'll pay two life and probe. You can actually just hard cast empty this turn. Which is no longer a great plan with that stifle. But what we can do is actually set up for a turn where we add nauseum. This Adnazim doesn't really work. But next turn we can definitely pass the flames. So I was thinking a little short sightedly when I said we can add nauseum because we're at the risky life total with three empties in our deck, but also like we really need the mana. So we're gonna name Spell Center here. That Surgical was a very good draw.
Okay. That worked out very well. So all that's left in his hand is a pyroblast and a land. Get him the pyroblast this fracture storm. Really? We're actually short on mana, so this doesn't really help us. Neither does that chrome box, because we need the empty. So you're supposed to play out the chrome box before the lines of diamonds, but here we're playing two anyway, and I'm not really sure if I want to imprint the empty or not. And I don't think that I do. If you drew another spell, Pierce, we lose. Or a surgical. I don't understand why he's not using his Pyroblast. That was a good draw.
Hmm. I don't think I want to show him that we actually have double empty. Oh, but he got the surgical loss. That doesn't matter. We're going to screenshot that one for the record books. That's pretty cool. All right. So we're going into game three against Rug Delver. And Tyson Flames is pretty good there. We could have used Dark Perdition for a natural empty, but it would have been close on racing. And uh, the sand is a little questionable, but our opponent's mulliganed. The sand is so close. We're on the draw, so I'm inclined to keep it. So we have Chromox and Brainstorm, which we can cast, or we can use the Chromox on the extra wish. We have three opportunities to draw a land. I'm gonna keep. And that gives us a blue card to imprint on Chromox. I think I want to hold the Chromax now as a red source. All right, we're going to fetch see if he stifles. Perfect. Fucking dead. Yes, he's not dead. He has a bunch of blockers in his hand. But 12 goblins typically races Rug Delver. Okay, so what we really want to draw now is a Cabal Therapy.
He chose not to shuffle, so that's pretty bad for us. He probably just lost. Chose not to reveal. That's strange. All right. We need the, his dollars to not flip again. Okay. <sighs> okay, we lost a close one. And Fluster Storm will close it out. That was a close match. It seems weird to me that they would be playing Is It Staticaster over Rough Dumble, but to each their own. And we have our second opponent. So I have them playing Grixis Delver and Maverick, so it's a pretty wide range. And we've lost the die roll. But this hand's fairly well rounded. I like this against either deck, so we'll try this out. And it looks like death and taxes. So we can empty for 10. That's really the only line that we have here. And just hope that 10 is enough to beat Athalia. If it's Stoneforge, we definitely lose. Okay, step one. So they're going to take 7, dropping down to 4. 
They can play Flicker Wisp. Uh, block one, remove one. Um, I don't know. They would get through four. No, they would get through three. If it's Flicker Wisp, we lose. Or even two blockers. Do we have exactly enough? Is their last card in hand Swords to Blow Shares? It is. That was a close one. Sure. Okay, I'm going to concede this one. We fell just short. Okay, so we're on the play this game. I like Ponders on the play. I do not like Duress. So on the play, I only board in Chain of Vapors and Echoing Truth. I don't bring in the Decays. And I will remember to update our record. And this hand is pretty bad, so we're going to mulligan that. Uh, so this hand doesn't really do anything either, so I, unfortunately I think we have to mulligan. Okay, that's where we're at. We're going to keep this. And as nice as a second land would be, we really need a Lion's Eye Diamond, so we're going to bottom. Okay, we're going to try this, hope to get there. So we need a pretty good brainstorm here. And that'll do. Didn't have a stone forge, so that was good news. So we're actually going to cast Burning Wish here for Grape Shot. Because next turn we can cast it for at least two. And that game was a good example of mulliganing for something aggressive even if you go down to five cards.
Okay, so on the draw, I do not want Ponder. And so we'll bring in the extra land to decay and an empty. This is an interesting hand. I think it's worth trying. Excuse me. Okay, let's find that line's at diamond. Alright, so they have a turn two Thalia. And a jet. Okay, so we have the answer for the Thalia. We're gonna remove this Echoing Truth because with the Mother Runes in play it's just not very good. We can actually empty the hard way. And that would be Storm 6. Is that the best line though? What was their hand? So they have a port. They were supposed to put back those two. I don't know if that wins. So we'll get through for 10 and then for 8, which should win. And then 6, hypothetically. And we have a Cabal Therapy for their Moons Out with Shit. opponent has conceded. Cool. That was a little buggy right now. And that was the sideboard empty the worms we drew there. So far we face Rug Delver and Death and Taxes. And we are facing the same opponent. Except this time we won the die roll. Pretty good hand. We'll keep this. So this is interesting. We can actually guarantee a turn two at nauseum. And we can do that by playing Bloodstained Mire, searching up a swamp. And then Chromox imprint Infernal Tutor. And cast Burning Osher Dark Petition. I 
Oh, I guess we wouldn't be able to... I'm sorry, I misspoke. So, by doing that, we have to fetch up a red source. So it's the, does the opponent have Wasteland game? Which I think I'm okay with playing. They've mulled the five. And our opponent just conceded. Okay. I take it they're not happy after our last round. So we are on the draw again, which means boarding up ponders. And duress. Keep in mind that our opponent could actually have switched decks because they, whenever you get paired twice, it means that they've switched leagues. So they could just not wanting to be showing us what they're playing. But most likely they'd be playing the same deck. Okay, so. This hand is a little risky just because it doesn't really do anything on turn one. Your best draw is like a dark ritual and you have to brainstorm into something good. Like I really want to keep this hand, I just don't think it's good enough. This is a little bit better. We're going to bottom that. That was a good draw. So let's see if we can draw a Lotus Petal. Actually, so we have a better line, and that line is Brainstorm. So Brainstorm allows us, so if we draw a Lotus Petal or a Lion's Eye Diamond, we can win the game, where Gitaxian Promo only gives us one out, Brainstorm will give us three. And I think I'd rather thin our deck a little bit more before making that play. Chromox. Is Chromox good enough? And I believe it is. So Chromox is good enough. So we're going to put Burning Witch on top of our deck. Play Chromox. Any black card would have done there. It didn't have to be Dark Ritual. I think our opponent might have a surgical extraction. Yep. Okay, so we have some outs here. We pretty much have to peel a tutor. They actually have a stone forge as well. All right, we're going to concede that. Okay, so we are not. We get to be on the play, so we take these out now, and we bring back in the ponders. It allows for a little bit more consistency. That's pretty cool, though, that we actually played to our out and hit. We just managed to get wrecked by Surgical. Uh. 
This hand is not great. But I kind of want to try it. So we're going to keep... The problem I have is, like, double answer is super bad because we really want, like, one of these to be a tutor. Alright, let's see what we're up against. Okay, they kept a pretty bad hand. I think they kept that hand based on surgical winning game two. And we want the burning wish. Okay, so we're not going to get to draw the other Dark Ritual. And it's probably best to play Ponder there just to see what to name with their Revoker on turn 2. So that makes, you know, sense. So they've played Planes and Surgical. Not a bad draw. So I'm actually not going to bounce it uh, on their end step because I'd rather bounce it on my own turn for extra storm. But I suppose I can do that anyway. Because we have two, and I can bounce my own lion's head on the chain of vapor. So I will bounce that other end stuff. And now we can actually just add nauseum. Salt in the wound. There's probably a better line there, but I'm being, I'm playing on autopilot. So like we could have like Inferno tutored for another line set. I'm gonna just emptied for a bunch, but that's not a guaranteed kill. And ad nauseum from this point is, you know, pretty good. We are not gonna reveal again. I probably shouldn't have imprinted the empty just because like if for some reason he had a surgical on infernal tutor or even burning wish like that that was just bad we ended up winning but that was bad play do not do that all right so we've been death and taxes twice and we are now two and one I'm like really, really bad at updating the record.
round four. Toronto. And we have lost the die roll, but our hand is fairly explosive. We're going to keep this. Come on, elves. Turbo depths. Imagine they take Infernal Tutor here. It's an interesting hand. So if this founder hits ad nauseum, we can win this turn. But uh, that's about the only way. So I'm trying to decide if we think that we can hook them with Cabal Therapy. I think regardless we want to put Therapy on the bottom. Because if we want it we can brainstorm into it. And I really don't want them to take Lotus Petals so I'm just going to play that out. Like, taking either of the rituals are effectively the same thing, so just don't give them the choice. So we are going to cast the Cabal Therapy. If we didn't want it, we would fetch first. So next turn, or well, on our end step, they're going to search up a uh, Thespian Sage, and then the turn after they'll be making it 2020. So we're under a real clock at this point. We're a mana short on Infernal Tutor.
So I think we're supposed to hide Cuter on top still. And if they go with us, we just don't fetch. They do not go score to us. It would have been bad if they did. For them and for us. So we actually get to ad nauseum with the land drop. Only drew 19 cards, no big deal. So we're going to board as if we think our opponent has sphere effects in their deck. So we're going to board out all of the discard. That's it. You can swap empty for surgical, or for Tundra's of Agony because of surgical, but I actually kind of like empty as an explosive play against them. It's better on the play than it is the draw, so maybe we'll do that next game if we lose. I think I'd rather just have empty anyway. The lots are faster plays in a matchup that has a lot of discard. We'll try this. So I'm expecting them to play a turn one discard spell hitting our tutor. And then from there we have double deck ritual. Oh, they just have a turn one sphere. Okay. Not a bad draw. So we're gonna fetch here for Bayou. And 
We're actually going to cast Chrome Mox and Imprint Ponder. I want to keep Brainstorm over Ponder just because if we get stuck with something that we can't get rid of for Infernal Tutor, I want to be able to hide it on top. We don't want any of those. We want a fourth land. Boom. That was not a bad draw. So we need to dodge them playing another piece of hate right now. Maybe we'll put Burning Wish on top and not in the graveyard to avoid Surgical Extraction. I'm sorry, on the bottom, not on the top, because we will eventually discard it to Lion's Eye Diamond, and that plays around Surgical. So we lose here if they have Mind Break Trap. Okay. So they ended up having surgical, so we made the correct play on the burning wish. And that should be game, but there's no harm in keeping on revealing in case they just happen to have something else. Also, Echo and Truth definitely won us this round, just saying. The card is really overperformed as a one of. A lot of green cards. Cool. We are four on one, fighting back after losing round one.
Just fitting in our last opponent at the moment. Moon Ruler. I don't believe I've ever faced this person before. I have not. This hand would be so much better on the play, I think. You get the extra card on the draw, but empty the one is just, just obviously better. I think we're going to be a little ballsy and try this. Planes. Alright, the sand does line up well up against death and taxes, so let's hopefully beat that land we need. Not quite what we wanted. Stoneforge. Our hand is not looking as great now. Oh no, we're going to mess. So it's actually kind of funny. We can't <laughs> empty the warrants here because it's in our hand. So we actually have to pass. But if we hit a land next turn, we can add nauseum. Yeah, empty would have been very close to this game, but I think it ultimately would have lost. Alright, come on, land. Deck is not liking us. Okay. So, do we have a guaranteed kill that doesn't involve ad nauseum? I think we do. I think we actually have enough for past and flames here. And even if we don't, there's enough to make an empty that's large enough to win. pop this out. So we have two mana floating. The first thing to do is cast our ritual. Then we're going to Infernal Tutor. Make our uh, graveyard a little bit smaller. It's taking up a lot of room. And we'll grab another copy of Lion's Eye Diamond. So Lion's Eye Diamond number three. And then we're going to sacrifice that and cast another Infernal Tutor. We'll get our last Lion's Eye Diamond. And we're actually going to break this one for blue. And we are just going to make an Empty the Warren so large that Batter Skull does not matter. 
We're also going to dress it away, but you know, whatever. I think we can actually just tendrils. Or grape shot. Alright, so this will go into the spreadsheet as a Tendrils kill because we could have cast Tendrils of Agony, but we're already here, so we're going to grab Grape Shot. So that was definitely a Past in Flames win. It could have been an Ad Nauseam win, though. So for AJ's purposes, Past in Flames didn't matter. I just think that Ad Nauseam from there... Like, you still had a land drop, but you've used a lot of initial mana sources. Like, you were down two Lotus Petals, the Lion's Eye Diamond. You were at 13, I believe. So like it could have been, you know, questionable. Bring the extra empty. Ponder comes out. And the three copy of duress. And then in comes two chain of vapor and an echoing truth. Keep. We were pretty fortunate to face death and taxes three times this league. Okay, so what we can do here is we can chrome mox. Imprint Red of Flame, Red of Flame, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Infernal Tutor. Or we can Brainstorm and hope to have a land and then we can add Nauseam. So, uh, it's a little more risky because if we miss, we probably lose. But I think if our opponent just plays a Stormforge Mystic, we probably lose anyway. So, I'd rather cast the Brainstorm. Okay then, so... We missed, but we got lucky and hit empty. And once again, we're in a position where we lose the surgical extraction. And this is the cyborg empty the Warren's bailing us out at the moment. And we finish 4-1 again.
pretty cool. So uh, with that win, if you are a fan of the spreadsheet, if you look at the death and taxes matchup, sorry, I'm multitasking and like not talking clearly. There's something wrong with my spreadsheet at the moment. For some reason, it's saying that I lost the turbo depths when I didn't. I'll have to fix that. But if you look at the spreadsheet, So Death and Taxes is very good as a matchup. Like you're over 75%, which is pretty much all you can ask for. And if you're a fan of filtering by deck list, because this is over the last year and we're all approaching almost a year of using the spreadsheet, but you can filter for 4.1 and you'll see the stats on that. I forgot the V in front. And here we are. So Grixis Delver is still pretty great. Death and Taxes, 100%. I mean, all these are relatively small sample sizes, so take it with a grain of salt. But 4.1 has been pretty good. If you go to the stats page, it's been doing pretty well. It's got a match win of 71. I think if you actually go to the deck versions, Keep in mind, this should actually be higher because it's saying that we lost the turbo depths for some reason when we didn't. We just won twice. So I don't understand why it's saying that, but it should be around 73% with our small sample size of 50 matches. And that's the video for today. I hope everyone has a great St. Patrick's Day and thank you for watching.